Hi there all and thank you very much for joining us for what is now, uh, believe it or not, episode number 21 of the Mantel Associates Network, which has been absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm extremely excited today to be joined by Anil Okay, who is the CEO of Advaldo and also the CCO of Alvatec, the Icelandic biosimilar CDMO giants, which are growing rapidly. Um, I've known Anil now for probably coming up to three and a half, four years, and we've had a lot of conversations about the market, about the industry, and really what, everything that has gone on in the businesses that he has been involved in has been absolutely incredible growth like I've not seen before. So Anil, absolute pleasure to have you on today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Alessandro. Thanks for inviting me here. It's great to speak with you. Great to speak with your audience as well. From Thank you so much. And I, I guess I want to kind of start off with, I mean, um, can you tell us a little bit about the two businesses of Albertech and of Advaldo and a little bit of background into your roles in those businesses and how it's all grown over the past few years? That would be awesome. Absolutely. So Adalvo uh, is basically a global uh, B2B pharmaceutical company. Uh, we develop our own products and we go to the market with giant pharmaceutical companies. Uh, almost we work with all the big names in the industry. And uh, I have been basically very lucky to, to build up Adalgo from scratch. Uh, literally, I was the first employee of the company <laughs> back in the day, which is right now reached to over 100 people uh, in three years. Uh, we had been growing extremely well. And not only the growth, but I think also we build up a very uh, interesting winning culture. Uh, which I will talk about it later. Uh, Alvotec uh, is even more interesting. Alvotec uh, is a fully vertically integrated uh, biotechnology platform. It's a company which is basically doing all the activities from cell line development until finished product, everything in-house. And that company uh, basically has been founded by Robert Westman back in the day in 2013 and significantly investing into its facility and expansion. We have R&D sites in, in Germany. Uh, we are building up a manufacturing site in China. So it's a really a company, uh, truly global. It's the biotechnology platform. And in, back in 2018, uh, our, our founder has asked me to take the chief commercial officer role for the company. And again, I had been very lucky uh, to build up the go-to market strategy for Alvotech where we have our, our beautiful partners, namely Teva in the US, uh, Stada in Europe, Fuji Pharma in Japan, <clears throat> Yangtze River in China, and, and multiple of them also in, in emerging markets. So we had been really very active in, in making our go to market strategy. So uh, I'm very happy to, to really involve into both companies or operations. It's really fun work, I have to say. It is unbelievable. And you know, every single time I go on to LinkedIn or or check the almost like pharmaceutical news. It seems like there's a new update in regards to a new partnership, something else which is going on, Robert online, you online. And it just seems that there's real kind of um, growth within the business at the moment and hugely exciting. Now, you mentioned um, Advaldo, you were the number one employee in the company, the first one to be hired in the business. I know that feeling. And actually we set up probably Mantel Associates about a, at roughly the same time, yet, Mantel Associates is 22 people. Valdo is now 100 plus, 110, um, I believe. How have you managed to scale that growth, build that culture? I look online as well. So you've got some people in Malta and different areas. How have you managed to do all of this? It's always obscure yeah, areas. It's, it's, it's a great question. And sometimes when I reflect about it also, uh, I feel that part of what is also luck, I think you, you need to be always lucky, right, in, in, in business. I think you can't carve it out, to be honest. But of course, I think the starting point was around really we, uh, with our management, decided to find the talents wherever they are. This was a starting point for us. What does it mean? So we didn't try to put the people into a headquarter, which is located in a country X, Y, Z. So we tried to basically go and find our talents wherever they are sitting. This was our first philosophy, which actually, of course, this was pre-COVID world. And, and with the COVID, it kind of proven to be the right strategy because when COVID hit us, my adult organization was literally doing the same thing as they were doing three years ago. Nothing has changed for us wow. apart, from, apart from traveling, which is, uh, which is a limitation. But our business was not impacted. Our digital technology was running. I know that some companies were not even ready for 
or working from home with their digital setup. I mean, all of these things uh, sounds funny, but this is a reality. I was sort of talking to a $3 billion company one day and they said, look, oh, we, we are working last four weeks to make sure that our people can work from home. Uh, I mean, what are you talking Inside. about, right? Insane. So all of these things uh, were really helpful. What is, I think, very important in the DNA of all the family companies, we are very entrepreneurial. We mm -hmm. are uh, continuously working with a change in our mindset. So we are always ready for the new, new wins in the market and we can really adapt to different wins. And this kind of uh, was the fundamental uh, for, for Adalbo from day one. And what I think uh, has happened, it's a really team game. So we started to recruit with the first guy, second guy, third guy, and so on. And all of a sudden, uh, if you pick up your top, top people in the right, right fashion, all of a sudden you start creating a winning culture. Everybody talks about the culture of the company and so on. What's the culture of the company? In my interpretation is the people. Mm. What type of people you have in a company. And, and actually I was really fortunate to be able to involve into every single recruitment process. So for instance, with my team, it uh, doesn't matter at what, what level we are recruiting. I am definitely participating at least one of the interviews to see what type of people we are getting to the organization. It's not because of judging their technical or quality skills, but it's more about understanding their expectations from a company and understanding their culture contribution. Because the culture is not standing as it is, right? It's evolving continuously with the people that you get into the company. And that was for me the, the biggest importance from day one in Adalbo. I knew that if we would be uh, successful one day, which is today, it's going to be only because of the people. Uh, mm. It's all about people. And if we would make the wrong choices on the people back in the day, probably we wouldn't be able to speak about this success today. So it is so important. I think your job is so important, especially for helping the companies to find the right match. Yeah. It's not about the right, right talent, even I'm not talking about the right talent. I think the talent in today's world, there are tons of talents out there. I think uh, a company like yours can help to the companies to find the right match. And this, this, this mentality, this basically mm -hmm. culture fit, in my opinion, is more important than the, the talent that, that you find in an organization. We all work for different companies, right? And we were always have, were working hard. We were always doing beyond the limits and so on. But there is an inflection point when you feel that you're in the right spot. And this happened to also my personal career. When I when I met with Alba family companies, I mean, I basically uh, worked with the, 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 the best leaders that you can find in the industry who had been uh, giving me a lot of freedom, who had been giving me a lot of decision-making power. And, and this, this was always, this was always what struck me personally. And, and today uh, talking as Adalbo CEO is really a privilege, I have to say. And, and we have much more ambitious targets to achieve. And I, I just would like to remind Alessandro, last year we got a very prestigious award from uh, Genetics and Biosimilars Bulletin. Uh, basically, we have been the business development initiative of the year as a dollar. Wow, unbelievable. And, I mean, if you look into our category, it has been a really a severe competition with very respected big names were there and, and Adalbo got this, this award. Even this, this thing uh, kind of shows to us that we were making an impact in the business last three years. Absolutely insane, huge achievement for such a young business as well to, to have all of that. And I think that when you are a smaller company growing um, rapidly as you are, you've got to think outside of the box to stand out. And for you guys to get that award, on the business development side, not having the name, not having all of that stuff on the market, having to go against the other competitors which are already established in that industry for longer um, is absolutely outstanding. What I'm interested as well is from a leadership point of view, Anil, is your CCO of Alvatech who have got so much going on. You said beforehand the company when you first joined was circa 300 people. Now it's nearer the 700 people mark, growing rapidly. Um, then your CEO of Valdo, you're building that business, which is over 100 people. Then on top of that, you're also focusing for not only all of the business development for the entire group of portfolios, but also being involved in the interviews, also being involved in everything. How are you doing it all from a leadership point of view, from a time point of view? How do you juggle it all? And whack in on top of that COVID-19 pandemic, which even though you guys have set up brilliantly, there would have still been panic across almost every company in some way. So having to juggle, maybe not your emotions, but your team's emotions and things like that. Yeah. 
I think it's a brilliant question, and it's kind of a little bit also uh, tying to the success of our, our company. And, and I think it's an important disclosure that I need to make. It is very important for leaders to find a strong second tier leadership. I had been very lucky both in Adalvo and Alvo Tech to have these strong second tier leaders who can, I call them micropreneur uh, <laughs> oh, okay. because they, they, they take a lot of initiatives and a lot of, a lot of uh, decisions on their own level. Mm. And to be honest, my role is very much on the critical, critical decisions and, and really more about the guidance, coaching and motivation and, and making sure that our, our big picture comes together with their decisions. So I am, I'm really, really, really lucky to have a team which is uh, acting like a micropreneur and they really take a lot of decisions on their own, which is, which is the really core to their success to have this team in place. Having said that, for me, uh, there are three priorities in, 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 in business. So first of all, we need to always execute. So when I look into, for instance, with our finance team, we have every week, every week, we look into our uh, financial priorities and execution priorities every week. Every week we look into our uh, cash flow. Every week we look into our uh, project plan. So we have a very strong execution plan in the company, uh, very operational driven. I mean, you can't just stay out of the operation. You are in the pharmaceutical business. You have to go and look into the details. And that's what I have to do as well with my team together. So this is for me the key. Second is we continuously revisit our strategy continuously. Just to, just to give you another hint, uh, every Friday morning, actually the one was today morning again, every Friday morning, we have a strategy meeting. Wow. I, I bet I bet not many companies have that. Uh, every single week? Meeting, every single week, every wow. Friday morning. We shut down our hotmail, we shut, we shut down our uh, mailbox, and we basically just talk nothing but strategy. Uh, and that's actually when you this exercise, do this exercise every Friday morning, that's something. Because then you are very ahead of your competition because your competition is talking about strategy on a quarterly basis. A hundred percent. A hundred. I remember watching um, uh, a speech from Jeff Bezos and, and he was basically talking about why Amazon is doing so well, all that sort of stuff. And he was saying, I'm not judging my managers on what they've achieved in this quarter, but I'm judging them by what they've achieved in the quarter of 2025 because we are working to be so far ahead even when we're dealing with the now the now is what we did three years ago and having strategy meetings all the time to try and think ahead is that same sort of mindset always thinking ahead right absolutely true this is i think for me the highlight of the week i love these sessions i love friday morning strategy meetings this is where with the core team we have uh, selected uh, leaders of, of the company and we come together and we really talk about a lot of strategic items. And the third point for me, I mentioned three things. The one is the execution, the second is keeping strategy right. And the third thing for me, which I think is another critical thing where many companies fail is the culture. Mm. Everyone talks about the culture, every company has their own culture and so on. But what I really spend most of my time is making sure our interactions are based on a winning culture that, that I want to see in the company. I want the people to challenge each other but not be upset about that. <clears throat> so all, all these type of uh, small details making a big difference in the big picture of the Otherwise, if you look into to service offering that we have, it's, it's kind of comparable what other companies are doing, in fact. Mm. But what makes the difference is really these three things. I love the winning culture thing. And something which we say internally at Manto Associates is, is that even though we're dealing with headhunting and it is an office job or a job that you do on the telephone, it's actually more, more in a way like a sport. Sales, business development, everything is about making sure that you're mentally sharp, making sure that you're prepared, making sure that the team bounces off of each other, works as a team, works works the business, and it's clear that you guys um, have got that formula and are absolutely smashing it with it. And something which is um, just kind of on the side, Alvatex headquarters as a as a CDMO and 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 business are in Iceland, yet you attract so much talent from, I don't know any other biologic CDMOs in Iceland. And you, you manage to get so many people from the rest of Europe to come to Iceland, which is not known as a destination where people would tend to be moving to. 
um, yeah. which is unbelievable. And I think in order to be able to do that and get people to make that move or move from the UK or move from Germany or whatever, they have to really believe in the values and the culture and what they're joining. And um, I think that really shines through. So absolutely unbelievable. Talking about the, the industry as a whole, the pharmaceutical space, the biosimilar space, what are some of the most kind of exciting upcoming things that you can see in the near future for all of us? Wow, that's a brilliant question. So what I am really personally very excited about the developments going on in the orphan drug space. Mm. Uh, it's rare diseases are, in my opinion, a very interesting segment for the pharmaceutical business. And it's also a nice segment where pharmaceutical companies can really differentiate and show value to the patient because, I mean, there are there are tons of uh, rare diseases still today do not have any treatment. Mm. And even if it has a treatment, it comes with a huge price tag. Some mm. countries can pay for it, but some countries can't pay for it. This is a really interesting area, and there is huge innovation going on in the rare disease space, which I'm really excited about. And on top of that, uh, of course, the gene and cell therapy uh, on the big pharma side. I think, I think this space is also evolving so rapidly faster than, than anyone can think of. So these two are the biggest excitements, I would say, in the pharmaceutical industry from my point of view. Big time. It is absolutely, absolutely insane what is going on. And for you as well, being the CEO of a, of a company and the CCO of another business, um, both companies have flown at a million miles per hour. What's been the biggest challenge for you personally growing into so much from when you were at Helm, completely different role to, to what you're doing. You've grown with this company. What's been the biggest challenge for you personally in both businesses? I think my biggest challenge personally, really speaking purely personally, you find very little reflection. Mm. Sometimes you, if you are in the helmet of a, of a hugely growing organization. Uh, this is, I think, biggest leadership challenge because I am a person would need my private time to really reflect and also to be very critical about myself as well. I'm very, I'm very self-judgmental. I really would like to challenge myself continuously. So these are the times that, that I was a bit missing, especially with post-COVID world. One thing has happened before I was traveling a lot, at least uh, every week I was traveling. At yeah. least to a plane. And, and you had your, let's say, one hour in the plane where, where you could take a glass of wine or you could just enjoy your lunch. And at least yeah. this one hour was kind of, you were alone. Nobody was disrupting you. Uh, and there was no meeting, no one texting you and mm. so on. And that was for me always a kind of a reflection moment as a leader. And it was helping a lot. And, and nowadays with the post-COVID world, I hear this a lot from my industry friends. Everyone is living with a blocked agenda. It's completely back to back. And it's evening crazy. meetings, the morning meetings, it's really like crazy. So I think this is a huge challenge. And why, what I started to use as a technique also to really block part of my calendar uh, automatically already in the week in certain times and just to really find some reflection points for myself. Because I think this is where we can get our energy continuously to help our people. And the second challenge, which I, I think is, is very important, uh, when you work with a new team, these dynamics of the team is so evolving. And this is exactly which the fun is actually starting. But if you don't manage these dynamics well, it can be a complete uh, distracting team as well. So where, where I really had to do a lot of communication, a lot of infusion, a lot of input, a lot of interactions with my people. So I really, I'm a people leader. I really would like to spend more time with the people. And especially when you have a grow, growing team and, and a big function, it was becoming a bit difficult for me to reach everyone. You know, sometimes I feel guilty that I'm not able to spend enough time with some of my team members mm. uh, because they have more an isolated, isolated work. But still, uh, this is one thing that I should get better as a leader. So these are the basically two challenges that I can name. It is, it is um, really, really hard. And the 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 point that you made about the putting time aside to reflect. Um, think about everything. I'm the exact same as you, which I, I'm pretty sure it's like an extroverted introvert, which is where like you you like to be around people, like do you think, but you really need your own time. 
and and it, it's the exact same. But I can't do what you do. I can't put an hour aside uh, or half an hour. My brain just can't do it. I, I get dragged into something or, or I try and do that. And then every six months you get like burnout from going and you think, you got to look after your body because the body is the main thing and your mind as well. But um, absolutely fascinating. What do you think is the the secret to good leadership um, in general and also good leadership as you grow and expand a business and maybe you can't communicate with everyone as much? It's a, it's a brilliant question, Alessandro. I think, to be honest, uh, in, in leadership, I think you should definitely, first of all, be a talented person. I think it is it is absolutely, in today's world, people would like to see real people. They don't want to see strong, uh, masculine leaders who are like top down. They know everything better than anyone else. I think these times are over. And also, uh, also the very technical and very subject matter expert leaders times are also over. You know, there has been an era that there had the CEOs were knowing everything. Uh, this is also over. In, in true modern world fashion, our internet is, 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 is not working as good. So what I wanted to ask you um, about Anil is given everything in terms of the growth, in terms of the businesses, in terms of yourself as a person as well, is if you could talk me through everything in terms of what it takes to, to be a good leader, but also what it takes to be a good leader in an organization which is growing at the speed that your businesses have been growing at as well, because that is hard. Absolutely. I think, uh, my short answer is really being authentic, who are, are real, who are honest. They can, they can say sorry, they can say I made a mistake. I think this is very important because uh, in today's world, especially you deal with a lot of complex situations and and even as a leader, you, you make a lot of mistakes and you make a lot of wrong decisions in this time and, and basically be a role model for that and then move on. I think this is critically important. Last but not least, being empathic, being, being a good communicator. I think these are that you can keep your people together. 100%. Uh, I love it. Leader. And what piece of advice would, would you give to other business leaders across the industry, across the world right now? Be persistent. I think as a leader, you have to be persistent. I think you are a great example of that, by the way. I have to oh, give you the question as well. So I think being persistent uh, and, and really trying to make it work and, and even seeing the light in a very negative situation, being optimistic as a leader, I think critically important leaders to be persistent with their, with their vision. 100%. You can never, ever, ever give up. And I think also inside that persistence as well, it becomes so important um, inside all of that position to, to make sure that the vision of the business is clear and that the team is persistent. So Anil, thank you so much for coming on today. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for talking through everything in regards to the great work that Alvatec and Advaldo are doing. Hugely appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care.